Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials as well as give a lot of baking business tips. And be sure to stay till the end of the video where I show you how I price this cake. So I had a lot of leftover cake scraps, so I decided to try something out. And what I did was I watched a few different YouTube tutorials on how to paint with a palette knife using acrylics and just a canvas. So I wanted to kind of recreate that, but only using cake and edible mediums. So today I'm just using some leftover American buttercream that I had. I whipped it up a little bit, added a slight bit of purple so it's pretty nice and white. And the way that I'm applying this is pretty haphazard. This is going to look fairly abstract, so I'm not being too too picky about making sure that every single little thing is smooth. One of the things that I do end up doing with this cake, which is different from the way that I ice other types of cakes, is I just kind of smooth at the edge and then I put it into my fridge just like that overnight and now I'm slicing off all of the edges just so I get a little bit more of a cleaner, sharper edge. You'll notice that the consistency of icing that I'm pulling off there isn't super, super sticky. If you were to do this with a meringue-based buttercream, it would be, but because it's American buttercream, it does form a little bit of a crust. We're just going to be using those three tools, and you'll notice I'm just using some gel food coloring and putting it directly into my frosting and mixing it around on the palette, quote unquote, which is really just a nonstick baking mat. Now, out of all the tutorials I watched, they pretty much just mix it up like this, so I decided to follow suit. And I will link down in the description box below the main channel that I kind of looked at for these techniques. Sadly, it doesn't look like they have actually been uploading that much on their channel, but many, many of their videos have millions of hits, so definitely go and check it out. There are two types of techniques that I find very, very therapeutic. Just straight buttercream piping and this. I just love the fluidity when you're mixing everything and if you don't like something, it's pretty easy to fix it. So after I laid down that foundation, I didn't put it in the fridge or anything, I just layered on that brown really, really thick and now I'm going in with my brush. And on my brush, I've applied just a little bit of a Mist in the color chocolate brown. I will often use airbrush colors to kind of paint on, but if you have edible paints, you can do that as well. And I'm just being really free with it here. I end up changing a few of the branches here and there as well. One thing I found helpful while doing this is making sure you have some sort of spatula or anything really that has a straight edge surface where you can kind of scrape off all of that excess buttercream. Now I did notice a few pertinent things that they did in these tutorials when they were using their palette knife and acrylic paints. The first thing is they really make sure to layer on quite a bit of the product. Now I'm not sure if sometimes the under layer was fully dried before they continued on to the next step, but from what I can see from the mixing of the colors, it probably wasn't fully, fully dry. So whenever I was applying something on here, I really made sure to apply quite a bit of the product so that I wouldn't get any holes or gaps and I wouldn't pick up the under color. So I guess I would call these little blossoms, little cherry blossoms, I suppose, and I really didn't want to pick up that color of the brown underneath. So I didn't get a good shot of me doing this, but what I did to pick up enough buttercream was I would kind of slide my palette knife through that buttercream but I would round out that tip portion so that I didn't have too much excess. Because if you have too much excess on there, it's not really going to look like the shape that you want. It's just going to end up looking like a messy blob. Now, the second thing that I noticed that they really did throughout their tutorials was really mix and blend different colors. And it's super, super important that you have white on hand because white is going to add a lot of that depth. And if you've ever painted before, you know that there's no real such thing as making a huge mistake when it comes to a painting because you can always let it dry and then cover it up. Kind of the same thing when you're doing palette knife work on a cake, you can always scrape it off and if you really can't get it off properly, you can place it in the fridge, let it crust over and then you can just do whatever you want on top of that. To finish off my very little cake, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add those finishing touches and guys, I couldn't resist. I had to add some gold leaf on here, which I really feel actually brightened this up quite a bit. And I have a longer piece of gold leaf here that I'm just going to put on the edge of that tree trunk just to give it a little bit more depth. And I'm also placing a few pieces of gold leaf just somewhere in those cherry blossoms to make it sparkle a little bit more. One other really cool thing that I saw being done with palette knife painting was I saw somebody put paint into a piping bag and just pipe directly on. So I really love that crossover between using acrylic paints and using buttercreams and how we seem to be borrowing techniques from each other's style of work, which is so, so cool. 
Now let's get into the pricing of this cake. Now once again guys, I want to make it clear that pricing obviously is not going to be the same all over the world. So you really need to look at my videos as a series so that you can see the price differentiation between the different techniques that I use. This pricing is based on all of the different colors that you're using, plus the particular technique. Also, a squared off cake, I always do charge a slight bit more because they are trickier to do. I also do want to mention that this cake is incredibly tiny. So when I say $120 Canadian for this cake, I do mean for it to be a bigger size. But if a customer insisted on making it this size, I would still charge $120 Canadian because it really is the same amount of work and the difference in ingredients cost is so, so slight. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a featured subscriber submission of the day, and it really is my fault, guys, with everything going on with my son. I have lost track of a lot of the things that you've been tagging me in, so please follow me at SD Bake Shop on Instagram. If you've already sent me a submission, but it hasn't been highlighted on this channel, please send it again, and I assure you I will try my best to make sure that I include it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!